Okay, yesterday we went over a bunch of information, but because we were doing our sign up, obviously not a lot of that was taught in depth. Make sure to do your questions. Your test is tomorrow. Okay, there's about 45 questions, multiple choice on your test tomorrow. Make sure you're ready for that. Both classes did, did not do so well on the previous test. Make sure you check your power school for your marks. Okay, and if you didn't do so well last time, make sure you readjust. We finished off yesterday talking a bit about monopolies. Anyways, uh, most of you have played the game Monopoly. How does that game typically end? Other than <coughs> people throwing the board. Uh, like, so whoever, uh, whoever doesn't go bankrupt has a better chance at winning. Oh, yeah. Okay. How do you win the game if you do win the game? How many of you have played Monopoly? Okay, so a handful of you. How do you win the game? getting everyone else to go bankrupt? Sure, you get everyone else to go bankrupt, right? That's possibly one strategy, but you gain a lot of the properties, which is obviously very different to the game of cash flow. How do you win in cash flow, 101? What is the, what is the objective? You're trying to escape? The matrix. It's the matrix, the rat race, right? You're trying to essentially have enough passive income to pay your monthly bills so you don't have to work, right? So these two games function very differently. In Monopoly, it's hard to have four winners, five winners, six winners. Whereas in Cash Flow 101, everyone can win. It just takes some people longer than other, others. A Monopoly, looking at an economic standpoint, looks a lot like... Uh, did we fill in these notes from yesterday? Did you kids get these already? Um, we finished on this slide, so sometimes governments can intervene, but a monopoly looks a lot like this. So <clears throat> when you go to the grocery store, I don't know if you kids do that anymore, if you ever go with your parents, you might see a lot of different brands and labels, but it usually comes back down to smaller individual companies. So PepsiCo owns a variety of companies, and I would need to look for an updated version of this, but. If you like Taco Bell, KFC, Pizza Hut, those are all a part of the PepsiCo company. Now, this, this shouldn't say monopoly at the top, it's something else. A monopoly is when no one else can compete. So, for example, the does the school have a monopoly on where you can buy lunch from? No, and why is that? Because there's the store. There's a store down the street. There's the cafeteria food. What else? Just get the dishes, you can order in food. So there's multiple options for you as a consumer, which means that there's no monopoly on the school. Like let's say they said you can't go off school property and you can't order food. Then the school has a monopoly on the lunch items that are being sold. Obviously you can bring your own food items, you can bring your own lunch whenever you want, right? So this isn't exactly a monopoly, these are uh, corporations, which is a bit different. And what's a market economy? Anyone remember from the notes the other day? You were speaking, are you trying to respond? Does anyone remember market economy? Is this on the right or the left of the economic spectrum? The right. So on the right, which is more individualistic, a market economy is an economy where the individual has more choices, they have more freedom, and the government does not intervene. Okay. Some of the times when a government, government might intervene in a more mixed economy is to protect the consumer. So from my understanding, there was a, there was a few houses that got like set on fire or something. There was a fire with a few houses somewhere in South Edmonton 
Okay, I don't know the cause of that, but let's say, you know, let's say every time we turn the lights on, the light switch, there was some electricity flickering there, or you could see it sparking. Or every time you plugged in your phone, you could see those sparks. Is that safe? Probably not, right? Let's say the circuit area overheats often. Have you done your electricity unit yet in science? Circuits and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Okay. So if you overload too much of the circuit board, it's a bad thing. It could start a fire. It could burn your house down. So how do you prevent that? Well, some people say you have the government regulate who can and can't do electrical work in your house. But just because you have a just because you went to school for something doesn't mean you're necessarily good at it, doesn't mean you're necessarily doing good quality work. So that becomes challenging as well, right? Ideally, you know, maybe you ask a friend, hey, do you know someone who did electrical work in your house? And they tell you, yeah, I know this person. They did a really good job. You know, they did really good work on my, the electrical network in the house. You know, the house hasn't started on fire, but the reasons why a government might intervene is to make sure that things are safe. Same like the question yesterday. So for those, I don't know if I asked this class or the other one, but how, yeah, I asked the other class. How many of you get some money from your parents once a month? A couple of you. How many of you potentially get some money, I don't know, Christmas or your birthday? Okay. So that money is given to you by parents, maybe relatives, whatever, it's yours to spend. Do your parents ever tell you what you can and can't spend that money on? Okay, yours do, yes. Anyone else? Sometimes, yeah. What do they, are you willing to share what they say no to? Um, essentially, my mom says nothing like for like electronics and stuff. Because she says we spend enough time on them already, so. Okay, so your mom doesn't like devices, electronics, and says, hey, don't spend money on that stuff. Use your money elsewhere. My mom said drugs. Drugs was an answer yesterday as well. Nothing stupid. What, what And what do your parents define as stupid? Like something they don't need. Okay. How do you define what's stupid? Something that's gonna like, be useless the next day. Okay, something's gonna be useless. So, <laughs> don't buy stuffed animals. <laughs> How many stuffed animals do you have? I lost count. You lost count, okay, so you have too many of these, right? You're hoarding. <laughs> so the same way that your parents tell you what you can and can't buy, Sometimes the government will step in and say, this is what you can and can't do, right? This is who can and cannot provide you a service, right? So like, let's say you go to a doctor and they're treating you and you find out a month or two from now that they didn't actually go to school to be a doctor. They're just giving you random advice off the internet that they found. How would you feel? Would you feel betrayed? Would you feel annoyed? Can't you like sue them? Yeah, you can sue. So I had a friend, he went to a dentist, he got some dental work done. The dentist messed up and his teeth were really messed up. Like something bad happened to his gums and, you know, then he had to go through this le and it's interesting because he's a Christian. He didn't want to sue the guy, but he wanted to be, get either a refund or have some sort of a resolution to the problem of like, hey, you screwed me over. Right. So that's, more or less why a government might intervene. It is no different than, you know, the way your parents might intervene and tell you not to buy things that they don't agree with, not to buy drugs or something stupid, something that's useless, that you don't need, or that you have more of. Yes? Um, is it like a, like, can you sue someone for something that they did, like, like a long time ago? Like how long? Like five years, because my, uh, So that's tricky, right? So even with my surgery with the nose, I signed a consent form, an agreement to a particular list of things that could go wrong. So if that was one of the things that could have gone wrong in the surgery, it's tricky, right? Depending on what she signed. So she would have to look at the documents she signed. And then, yeah, you can't just say like, oh, 20 years ago, this person did this thing because you know, what else happened in the last 20 years? Five years is pretty reasonable, right? Like it's not that long time. 
So she would have to look into her own unique situation, see what opportunities she has. Probably, you know, hiring a lawyer would be very useful. <coughs> So this slide for you is very abstract. It talks about supply and demand, how that affects your choices. Um, you know, typically people want things that are in low supply to an extent, you know, if they can afford them. And people will buy race cars if they can afford them and as a status symbol because maybe they only made five or 10 that year. Right. Or how many of you have been to a concert? I know you're pretty young for that, but okay. a couple of you. Did you buy merchandise from the concert? You did. And any of you? You didn't. What about you two? Did you buy any merchandise, like a shirt or a hat? Okay, maybe. Right. And part of it is because you know that once that concert and tour is over, it's going to be hard to get that same shirt, right, or the same item or product, which means there's a limited amount of supply. For example, this book that a couple of you boys bought, there, I mean, there's an endless supply. You can just go to the store and buy them, right? Better yet, you can go to the internet and pirate it. So willing and inclined. No, I'm not recommending you, you do that. But the information in there you find valuable, so you buy it for that reason, right? But if you, if you knew tomorrow, let's say, for example, I don't know, what, what's a well-loved item from the cafeteria? What do we like? Well, what's, what do they only make a few of? The coffees, the iced coffees, right? How many do they make? About like 25, 30? Okay, so if you like iced coffees, you gotta go quickly, because they'll get sold, right? That's gonna make an impact on your decision. You know, same with, uh, if your favorite athlete was releasing a unique jersey and they only release a thousand of them, maybe you'd go to their website, the store, whatever, to go and buy that, right? And that's all about supply and demand and decision making. Labor union, another thing that's very abstract to most people and not really related to your lives, but you could look at it in this way. So a bunch of you are signed up for the grade nine field trip, right? The, the grade nine retreat. Yes. Okay. How many of you got to raise your voice and provide some feedback as to where you go? Right. No one, right? So let's say you got together as a group of grade nines, organized yourselves, you know, picked a bunch of you to be some leaders and spokespeople to represent your views and where you want to go. And then you present that to Ms. Rantucci and Mr. Hack and say, hey, like we actually think we should go somewhere else. That's the same concept as a labor union, right? You come together with your own desires and you advocate for yourself. You speak for yourself okay, on your behalf, right? And that works all the way down at the individual level as well. Like let's say someone is doing something to you that you think it's very rude and you don't like. And the first level of a union or advocating is at the self, the individual. So telling that person that, hey, you know, I don't like this, can you stop that? And then maybe as a class you get together and say, hey, we really don't like this person. You know, they, they need to change their behavior. You can do that as a, as a, as a group of people who are working together in a similar industry as well. what I want to say about this. How many of you are aware of the dance that's going to happen like next week? Okay. How many of you are aware of how the grade 12s got that through? Does anyone know? Okay, so what, 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 what did they get up to? They went to the front of the gym and had people sign. Okay, so they, they, they got a bunch of people to unionize. Right? They made a group. And what did they ask you when you signed? How many of you signed it, by the way? A bunch of you signed it. What did they ask? Like, how, how did they how did they get your signature on the piece of paper? Because I didn't put mine. 
Although, well, I don't need to do that. But how how they get your signature on there? What did they sell you? Nothing. They just don't tell you. They just said sign the paper. <laughs> they were lying to you. Yeah. I just want an excuse to buy a new dress. What? <laughs> Very nice. Anyone else? How'd they get you to put your name down? My stuff. Oh my god. Um, it was really like. Uh, Was it convincing when they grabbed you by your collars and shook you? Yeah. Uh, the Greek, I don't know his name. Raziel, probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, grabbed my shoulder and said, hey, why is this? So what's it for? And he told me, oh, okay. It's a good life lesson. You know, if somebody just grabs you and tells you to sign something, develop that bit of space where you go, what am I signing? All right, so, so yesterday, um, do kids know Doctors Beyond Borders? Have you heard of this charity organization? It's a, it's a charitable organization. They try to send doctors to places in need. You know, they come to my door, they ask for a donation, right? So I have $10 cash, and I'm trying to give this to the guy. He's like, oh, we actually can't accept cash. He's telling me this as he's slowly filling my information out on a digital sheet. I don't want to give my information just randomly, so I tell the guy, I'm like, you know what? I don't really want to give my number, so I'll just pass. It's okay, right? You, know, you can't just let people grab your shoulder and make you sign things. I just wanted to support it. Okay, are you gonna go? No. Why not? The dance at grad last year was fun. I don't know. It might be cool. But it might be amazing. Might what about you? Are you gonna go or you signed? Probably not. Is this your food? I don't know. Okay. Like free food or yeah, like, like to buy? Food. Probably not. Oh. Uh, I don't know. They, maybe they'll have drinks. <laughs> non alcoholic. You animals. Okay. Anyone else want to share how they get you to sign? Um, they said, oh, it's going to help with our graduation for like, people um, who can't afford it. <laughs> oh, they pulled on your heartstrings. You're like, oh, I'll sign that. Like, Are you going to go? Them. I don't know. See, you should go, kids. It'll be fun. The dance last year grabbed me so much fun. I'm forcing Kayla and Aaron to go. Good, good. Yeah. Grab them by the shoulders and just drag them along. Actually, they said it was a charity. They said it was a charity. Yeah. yeah, the charitable cause of the grad. Yeah. But hey, maybe it changes things, right? So they unionize. Now maybe the next year kids go, hey, we want to dance as well next year. So they do the same thing, right? And you set a tradition, which would be cool. Because honestly, dances are pretty fun. You just have to let go of the fact that you're dancing. You know, just no one's watching you. Um, so just like how a labor union can start developing a labor law, right? So for example, uh, yesterday, I don't know if I should say this, but so yesterday, when, that was yesterday, when I got on top of your desk and crawled around on it, I'm actually not allowed to do that. It's, it's actually elite. Like I, I actually can't take a chair and stand on it. It's, a, it's against my labor union laws, right? Because what happens if I, Fall, fall and break my neck right in front of all 26 of you. Trauma. I traumatize all of you, right? Be, wouldn't it be great? Oh my God. You could leave high school with a unique, or leave junior high with a unique experience. <laughs> Maybe I twitch a little bit, you know, because you don't die right away from your neck break. Um, so you set a precedent, right? But when people get together and make some change, Maybe that change continues forward. So maybe there's going to be another dance next year. I hope so. I hope the dance goes well this year. The grade 12 should really advertise it though. Maybe I'll grab, a, maybe I'll grab them by the shoulders and tell them what they should do, right? That's actually a smart idea. I should do that. Because yeah, otherwise, what's that? No, no, no. They should create like a two minute presentation that they bring with a poster, a beautiful poster. And then maybe one of them busts a move. Look, some of you are going to the hip hop thing, right? You might be going there as well. I might shoot you off there. Learn a move, come to the dance, bust a move. It'll be great. Okay, it'll be fun. Okay. Are you going? You should. What kind of music do you listen to? What? Like heavy metal? <laughs> we'll play one heavy metal. <laughs> Yeah, so you make change. So, you, you know, like, I don't know why I'm not allowed to stand on a chair. I'm pretty capable. I actually can't even stand on those desks and the tables on the side. Right. But, you know, they, they, they made some laws for safety. So, 
don't tell my boss. Okay. Don't tell my boss what I did. Okay. Uh, last but not least, this is a very old map, 2006, but I would say, you know, Alberta usually does well, right? Alberta usually has a lot of jobs. We have a big oil sector, which I don't know, got hammered by the government in the last five, six years. But Alberta generally does well because we have a variety of different jobs. People are always coming here for that reason. But as you see, uh, actually, this would be a useful skill to work on, right? What is this, before I even continue, what is this chart measuring? Unemployment. Unemployment. Okay. Where did where where did you see that? Uh, top right. Okay. Sure. Top left. Unemployment rates in Canada. So now we have a, a a legend, a scale, right? How do you know which one's better or worse? The the lighter it is, the better it is. Okay. So so the or the orange <laughs> and the yellow. <laughs> Right, zero to three point nine percent, and as it gets more towards this dark red, you have twelve you to fifteen point nine percent. So, what is unemployment? Lie. Not having a job. Not having a job, right? Why do you decide to call me up, Miguel? What? Actually, that's so rude of you. <laughs> right by the camera too. You no, know, yesterday I was rewatching my video. This is from my block C class. A bunch of the kids were chatting. There's a student that sits right beside the camera who I can never what? hear because the student's very quiet. But rewatching. I realized the student asked me like several questions that I just completely ignored <laughs> because I couldn't hear them. But I heard them on the camera. And then I went, wow, those are actually all good questions. I should have answered those, but I didn't hear them. And instead, we got you here just harassing him <laughs> across the room, calling him out for what? Fly has a job. Do you work, don't you? No. no? Okay. Do you work? No. You're both on <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Why not? Because I'm not from Canada. Wait, what? You're illegal. Yeah, I'm an illegal. Oh, you don't have your citizenship yet. No. Wow. Okay. okay. What about you? What's your excuse? <laughs> I'm joking. No one will hire him. Oh my god. That's so mean. Okay. So, um, let's say I ask you a question. Which provinces have an unemployment rate between four and seven point nine percent? Okay. What's the answer? Wait. Five seconds. Four, Which one? BC, Saskatchewan, BC, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Saskatchewan, Ontario. BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario. Northwest Territories. Northwest Territories. Yukon. Yukon. Trick Whoa, question. I asked even... provinces. I, mean, I asked provinces. These are territories. I literally said, and then the territories. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, the reason why I bring that up. Oh, and one more. No, kind of. Not really. That one might be a. No, that is, yeah. It's the same one. Okay. The reason why I asked that is because. I got my results back from the diploma from last year, and I would assume very, something very similar is going to happen this year. But a lot of y'all struck, not you kids. I think I think I think you're somewhat okay. But people start to struggle with these graphs and information. What it's, what it's telling you. So this is a very simple relaying of information. But when you get to your diploma level, some of this stuff is hard because there's no cool image of a country. There's no colors. Probably not. I don't think they put color on the diploma exam, right? But they just give you charts and data and numbers and like labels and everything. So eventually, like this might not even be this year, kids, if I'm being honest, I'll create a resource that helps teach people that skill. Why is, um, is it like it's really dark? Because all, just like all old people there. No, Newfoundland and Labrador is likely dark because they fly out to the oil sands and get their work there in Alberta. What does he do? He's a wood smart. He's an operator. Okay. So it, it is a smaller province, and there's going to be less opportunities. Like, I, I really don't know how much Canada still does for fishing because a lot of this water is protected as it should be, right? Because the oceans are lovely. Like, the only thing scarier than the ocean is like a big empty pool that's like 70% of the earth. Right? That's terrifying. And we want to protect the habitat along the coast, which is where most aquatic life is most like life in water is near the land so i don't know you know and and i don't think a lot of trees and forests grow there so in terms of natural resources i really don't know what newfoundland and labrador can offer and i really don't know if a lot of people go there for tourism yes patiently the project that's being built there and it's a gold mine they call it gold down there that's good man that's good for the province Assuming they even allow it to happen, right? 
Like people nowadays are very anti-touching anything to do with the environment because they think the world's gonna end in the next 10 years, which is not kids. Gold. What's that? Gold. But if it's gold, then what does that help the environment? Well, you have to dig it up, right? Gold can be really deep in the ground. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's that deep, but yeah, you have to dig it up, you have to process it, you release all these carbon emissions, which people don't like, but you know, you kind of need CO2 for all the good stuff we do in life, like, like dance. <laughs> um, yeah, so people get really upset with anything to do with digging up in the environment, right? That's why there's such an anti-oil sentiment in the government, because right? they're pushing a zero carbon policy, which, for the record, kids, it's very hard to achieve, right? Like all human life, a lot of human activity releases this emission called car CO2, carbon dioxide, like when we breathe out as well. But every time you get to school on a bus, even if you get to school on a horse, this horse is poop. They let out, they let out the, and you know, cows let out something even worse called methane. Methane is pretty bad for the environment, but you know, again, Cows are tasty. They take this like, they take this thing. You see all that green stuff out there? You can't really, because the blinds are closed. We can't consume that and it doesn't really do much for us. Why? But cows consume it and they turn it into cow meat. And then we eat that and then we live a good life. We can eat grass. We, we can't digest it. We can eat grass. We can't digest corn. What? Corn's not good for you either, right? Okay, that ends that. Grade nines.